If you could track the line of evolution and go back an exceptionally long time ago, you'd see some weird creatures called ediacarans. It seems like these little fellas made of tubes showed up 579 million years ago. They thrived at the bottom of the ocean for about 37 million years, chilling and minding their own business. It continued until they disappeared, or better yet, turned into faint marks we now only know from the sandstone fossil record. The world started to change for these ancient creatures somewhere around 541 million years ago, when a lot of new life forms came into being. Some new creatures began to evolve, and it's possible they might have replaced our friends. They might have changed the environment in ways that made it hard for these poor fellows to survive. Why does this even matter that much? It was the first time when a complex life form went extinct because of other living things. Usually, when you hear about lots of creatures vanishing from the face of the Earth, it's due to something like a giant volcanic eruption poisoning the oceans, or a big space rock slamming into our planet. For example, 440 million years ago, a big change in the planet's climate happened. The water in the oceans became colder, and it wiped away a lot of ocean life. The southern part of a big landmass called Gondwana ended up covered with ice quickly. This made a lot of Earth's water turn into ice, which, again, caused the sea levels to drop. Creatures from that time were struggling to find food. Plus, they didn't have homes where they could evolve, live, and reproduce. Then there was this interesting period called the Age of Fishes, when a wide variety of different sea creatures appeared on Earth. Even though some animals were starting to live on land, most of the action and fun was still in the oceans. At least until the moment when trees and plants ruined the party. Their roots started growing on dry land and it transformed the world, turning rubble and rock into soil. This was fun for land animals, but it gave all those fellas in the ocean depths a lot to worry about. The soil, rich in nutrients, got into the oceans, which made a lot of algae grow in the water. These blooms eventually caused enormous dead zones, where algae took away oxygen from the water. So lots of marine animals that were simply fine living their peaceful lives in the ocean couldn't breathe there anymore. Plus, they didn't have enough food to survive. Or we can talk about the biggest extinction event called the Great Dying, 253 million years ago, when almost 90% of all species on Earth vanished, including many land creatures such as insects, reptiles, and amphibians. This happened because of insanely strong volcanic eruptions. When you see what happened in the past during these extinction events, you can understand better why the case of Edicarians is so intriguing. Researchers haven't found any evidence that low oxygen levels or some other troubles that might have happened in their environment could have caused them to disappear. Also, they've agreed that conditions weren't that bad since the creature's fossils remain intact. They look for answers in southern Namibia, studying rocks that contain fossils from the time when ancient creatures vanished and new ones came to the scene. Researchers found many traces of these new ones left behind. Modern animals are like architects of their environment. They change things around them, dig into the ground, and eat one another. But if they caused ancient creatures to disappear, the remains of those species had to show some signs of struggling, something the fossils from Namibia indicated. Traces were similar to predatory sea anemones. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. How did tiny, simple cells even turn into such complex organisms anyway? Throughout time, they got bigger and ended up with nuclei and mitochondria, parts that help cells work, but it's still not completely clear what really happened here. The most accepted theory is that mitochondria, which are like the powerhouse of the cell, came from a kind of bacteria that got inside another bigger cell. This bigger cell started to change over time developing more parts, like the nucleus. This way, a cell became stronger and more complex. That sounds cool, but we can't be sure of this. One of the problems with this idea is that we don't see cells in between the simple and complex stages. There's also a new theory that says that the first step toward complex forms of life 
involved a bacterial cell that formed bumps on its surface. These bumps trapped similar bacteria, which then helped the cell get bigger. As it grew, the bumps turned into parts. And some of these parts later turned out to be useful, such as endoplasmic reticulum, the outer nucleus membrane. More and more parts started developing, which meant increasingly complex forms of life. And the most complex known creature that we ended up with is this tiny transparent water flake. It has 31,000 genes, which is 25% more than what humans have. This water flea is especially interesting because it can transform its shape when things get tough. It can grow spines, helmets, or even teeth, depending on its surroundings. And this might be because it has so many genes. Scientists copied its genes, and instead of staying the same, they quickly changed their roles to adjust to the environment. Researchers believe the copied genes would stay the same and only change later. So this was a bit of a surprise. And this interesting creature even has some genes like ours. This may help us understand our own kind better. For instance, how humans react to different threats in the environment, and how we can improve things that negatively affect our health. Or imagine if we could grow some of those cool additional organs, like this water flea. The first complex forms of life are older than we thought. 1.6 billion years ago, there was a happy community of small, bright red things that looked like plants. It was flitting around in a shallow pool of ancient waters and eventually ended up trapped in rocks and preserved till the end of time. A few years ago, scientists from Sweden found these fossils in India and concluded that they could be red algae. Using a special method, they carefully extracted them from the rock and discovered two types of red algae. One that looked like a segmented noodle and the other with layers of cells. To understand them better, the researchers made 3D models of them and used radioactive dating to confirm their age. If that's true, they're almost half a billion years older than we previously thought. A very long time ago, our home planet was hot because of all those things slamming into its surface, like asteroids and comets. This made it difficult for life to start there. But about 3.8 billion years ago, these hits slowed down, and life finally appeared on Earth. At first, those were simple life forms. But then, more of these space objects hit Earth. And it's possible some of them brought water and other stuff important for life. Some life forms survived these hits and finally had a chance to evolve. However, we still don't have unambiguous evidence of how it all started. So no one is sure if life on Earth appeared just once or multiple times in unusual ways. Our planet had building blocks, which are elements important for the appearance of life, even a long time ago. These blocks could have appeared naturally or might have come from space rocks. As they join together, they form more complex things like proteins, fats, and DNA. And maybe this process happened more than once. Someday, we'll find the answers because it will help us understand not only our planet, but the odds of life emerging on other planets too.